Every villain from Spider-Man Unlimited explored. Be it enemies made because of his overt profession as a photographer for the Daily Bugle, or his secret profession as Spider-Man, Peter Parker had to face a lot of adversaries in his daily life. He could not catch a break because of his spidey senses tingling whenever danger was afoot. His chronicles were shown in Spider-Man, the animated series, and continued in an interesting series called Spider-Man Unlimited, which was unfortunately discontinued after a short run of 13 episodes. Running from 1999 to 2001, it showed Spider-Man encountering his classic foes in a new setting and the spidery ways in which he dealt with each one of them. Saban Entertainment was in charge of this series for a while before Fox Kids took over and released another 13 episodes, ending the last one without a definitive conclusion. Here is a video that brings you many descriptions of the villains whom he fought against on his new adventure and how he defeated them. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Spider-Man, yield to the synoptic. You and I will merge and be one. Venom. Venom is a villain who doesn't need any introduction. He was an almost unbeatable extraterrestrial symbiote who wreaked havoc on Earth when he arrived but soon became a fan favorite. He also appeared in Spider-Man Unlimited as one of two primary antagonists in the series' first two episodes, Worlds Apart Parts 1 and 2. The episodes began with Spider-Man leaving his homeworld of Earth and traveling to a parallel universe called Counter-Earth. In this world, he discovered that a corrupt organization called the High Evolutionary had taken control and had a mission to create a place that was not plagued by human emotions such as greed, malice, avarice, and violence. Counter-Earth was a planet that had a race of beings called Bestials, the dominant race that ruled over the human minority. Meanwhile, Venom was also on Counter-Earth, and he had allied himself with the High Evolutionary, who had promised to cure him of his need for a host. But how did Venom find himself in a parallel dimension? He took a free ride on the spaceship that Colonel John Jameson was in, who went on a manned expedition to Counter-Earth. Along with him was another stowaway, but that comes later. Venom was working as one of the High Evolutionary's enforcers, and he was tasked with capturing Spider-Man, who the High Evolutionary saw as a threat to his regime. In Episode 1, Venom was first seen during a battle with Spider-Man on the spaceship he was hitchhiking on, although it was without John Jameson's permission of knowledge. He duked it out with the superhero, making quirky jokes and showing off new moves and abilities which he never had before. This made Spider-Man a little more cautious while dealing with him, but it didn't stop Venom from trying his best to make his escape to Counter-Earth a success. After a brief fight, Spider-Man was pushed down from the spaceship and he created a parachute from his webbing, stating regrettably that John was alone in the spaceship and he couldn't really do anything against the villain. In Episode 2, it was shown that while Spider-Man failed, Peter Parker borrowed some anti-symbiote technology and a new suit from Reed Richards' lab and successfully made it to Counter-Earth. But he got caught by the enforcers of High Evolutionary and was put up for torture and elimination by Lady Vermin, Lord Tiger, and many others present there. But Spider Spider-Man being Spider-Man, he managed to escape from the High Evolutionary's custody with the help of a group of rebels, which John Jameson was a part of. Venom continued to pursue Spider-Man and the rebels, and he engages in several battles with Spider-Man throughout the episode. Venom was pushed back due to the anti-symbiote technology that Spider-Man had and slunk away in a drain. Throughout the episodes, Venom was portrayed as a ruthless and dangerous opponent, willing to do whatever it took to capture Spider-Man and complete his mission for the High Evolutionary, although it was definitely for his own purpose, to let Synoptic to consume Counter-Earth and rule it. Carnage. Remember when we mentioned another stowaway on Colonel John Jameson's spaceship? Yes, that was Carnage. Jokingly called as the Blob Brothers by Spider-Man when he saw the both of them sneaking into the spaceship, he was easily recognized due to the red blob he transformed into. Carnage had the same goal as Venom, who wanted to eliminate their only threat, Spider-Man. And of course, their main goal was deceiving High Evolutionary and letting Counter-Earth be taken over by Synoptic. Synoptic was basically a group of symbiotes who were millions of years old, sealed beneath the the surface of Counter-Earth. They were first there before everyone else on Counter-Earth, with dinosaurs as their hosts, but a meteorite crashed on the planet, and they were reduced to the slithery blobs that Venom and Carnage were. After landing on the planet, they were captured by the High Evolutionary, but they negotiated with him and received permission to roam on the planet, protecting his empire. Thus, while acting as High Evolutionary's enforcers, they also looked out for potential hosts for the symbiotes buried under the surface, and wanted to revive the whole planet as symbiote heaven. Carnage played a significant role as one of the
one of the main villains, and he was depicted as an even more dangerous opponent than Venom. He possessed similar powers to Venom, but his symbiote was even more unstable and granted him almost unlimited power and a complete lack of empathy or morality. Carnage's role in the series was primarily to serve as a physical and psychological threat to Spider-Man, and to create a sense of danger and urgency in the story. He was often portrayed as a sadistic and unpredictable villain, capable of committing horrific acts of violence without remorse. Eventually, their plans were thwarted repeatedly by the superhero, and they were permanently stopped by him. Carnage was definitely someone to be afraid of because of his complete lack of morality and the extreme means he was willing to go to so as to achieve his goals. Nation, don't be ridiculous! You led me here! It's not that matters a whole lot now. Bestials. High Evolutionary created the new men on Earth, who were supposed to be the heralds of a new age. This idea did not sit well with a lot of other mutants, and was shut down by a group including the X-Men and Magneto. He then arrived at Counter-Earth and created the Bestials to be perfect, who did not have the emotional drawbacks that humans had. High Evolutionary wanted the Bestials to be free of greed, malice, violence, and other destructive tendencies that humans possessed. This resulted in them taking over the planet and subjugating the humans who were already living there, reducing them to a community of oppressed minority. The planet was soon populated by the Bestials, pushing the humans further away from the center. The Bestials, who appeared in the series, were Lord Tiger, Lady Verma, Sir Ram, and Lady Ursula, among many others, and each of them looked true to their name. High Evolutionary ruled with the Knights of Wundagore, while humans formed the human resistance led by John Jameson. The Bestials mentioned just now were also called Knights of Wundagore, and had specific roles assigned to them. Lord Tiger was the leader, Lady Vermin was the infiltrator, Lady Ursula was the muscle behind the group, and Sir Ram was the scientist who helped in protecting whatever or whoever the High Evolutionary was interested in. Spider-Man was captured by the Knights and was about to be put to test, but he escaped in the nick of time. Venom and Carnage also arrived and attempted to take over the Bestials because they were stronger than the humans. Symbiotes craved strong hosts to ensure their safety, growth, and survival. Spider-Man joined the Resistance to fight the Bestials and free the humans, but his true identity remained unknown. No one really knew if he was a human or bestial because of his physical appearance and abilities. Such good friends. Tell him that Peter better pay his rent today. Mom. Green Goblin. Green Goblin has always been one of the primary antagonists that Spider-Man has had to face from the beginning, but the Green Goblin we saw in the series had some twists in his origins and personal relations, keeping in line with the plot. Green Goblin misunderstood that Spider-Man was the one who abducted Dr. Naoko Yamada Jones and also her son Shane. Naoko Yamada was a doctor on Counter-Earth whose clinic treated many patients, Man-Wolf and Eddie Brock being some of them. Shane was rescued by Peter Parker one day, and Peter later rented a room from Naoko for the duration of his stay on Counter-Earth. However, Spider-Man convinced Green Goblin otherwise, and the two unexpected allies teamed up to confront the real villains, Venom and Carnage. Despite the successful rescue of Naoko and Shane, the two continued to doubt each other's intentions. According to strong implications, the Green Goblin was actually Hector Jones, Naoko's ex-husband, and Shane's father. Hector was a proficient inventor and also sympathized with the Resistance before his sudden disappearance. He made the Green Goblin suit to battle against the Bestials and High Evolutionary. It is likely that he went into hiding to safeguard his family from his involvement as a vigilante or rebel. Later on, he became anxious about Peter Parker living with Naoko and Shane, and attacked him. He then placed cameras in the basement and discovered that Peter Parker and Spider-Man were the same people. Both Peter Parker and Green Goblin were captured by a group called the Rejects, who were bestials that were shunned by society as a result of the High Evolutionary's decision. In order to escape, the two pretended to assist the Rejects. During their escape, an explosion occurred, which was believed to have killed the Green Goblin. However, it was later uncovered that this was untrue, and the Green Goblin returned to aid Spider-Man and the Rebels in their final confrontation against the High Evolutionary. The Hector Jones and Green Goblin, who was shown in Spider-Man Unlimited, was completely different from the one in the comics, and was an original rendition of the character for the TV show. Up here in time. Incoming! Gid Hoskins. Being a test subject never ended well for anyone. It was unfortunately the same in the case of Gid Hoskins. As a young boy living in the basement on Counter-Earth, Gid Hoskins underwent a traumatic experience that changed his life forever. Sir Ram, an evil figure who worked for High Evolutionary, kidnapped and experimented on him, transforming him into living bandages. Despite this setback, Gid refused to give up and found a new sense of purpose by being a rebel and fighting against the people who tortured him. Through his involvement with the Resistance, he discovered his own strength 
strength and was able to fight back against the oppressive regimes of the High Evolutionary, the Knights of Wundagore, and the Bestials. Even in the episode he appeared in, Deadly Choices, Git was not a rebel without a cause. In the midst of the ongoing conflict between the human resistance and the oppressive regimes of Counter-Earth, a new threat emerged in the form of a deadly weapon that could potentially destroy the city. The resistance upon discovering the existence of this weapon, Mutagen Z99, deemed it necessary to take action and put an end to the threat. They sent Git Hoskins on a mission to steal the weapon from a level 5 laboratory, unaware of the fact that the weapon was contained in a canister that would explode and cause widespread destruction if tampered with. Meanwhile, the Knights of Wundagore caught wind of the situation and became concerned about the potential dangers posed by the weapon. They alerted Spider-Man, who realized the severity of the threat and immediately rallied the resistance to team up with the Knights in order to find Git and prevent the device from detonating. After much searching, Git was located and convinced to disable the bomb, but not before Sir Ram and Spider-Man got into a heated argument over who would take possession of the weapon. In the end, Git decided to give the weapon to Sir Ram, believing that he would know how to safely dispose of it. Unfortunately, their plan was thwarted when Venom and Carnage infiltrated Sir Ram's lab and stole the canister, leading to a whole new set of challenges for the heroes to face. Despite the setback, however, the joint efforts of the Resistance and the Knights of Wundagore demonstrated the power of unity and collaboration in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. Git's bravery and determination in the face of adversity proved invaluable to the human cause, as he risked his life to ensure a brighter future for those living on Counter-Earth. Despite the horrors he experienced, Git refused to let his circumstances define him. Instead, he chose to stand up for what was right and fight against oppression. His story is a powerful reminder of the importance of resilience and perseverance in the face of adversity. Kill for. Suck an egg, butt brain. High Evolutionary High Evolutionary is a character with a story of adventure and domination. His excessive ambition for ultimate power cost him a lot of things that were close to him, although the loss had little to no effect on his actions. He began his journey by traveling to the Savage Land, where he faced off against Garak and managed to trap his opponent's essence in the ground. He then established himself as the ruler of Wundagore, Mountain, where he created the New Men, a group of hybrids between animals and humans. Two mutant children were brought up in Wundagore Mountain by Lady Bova, and they came to be known as Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. Years later, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch returned to Wondagore Mountain to uncover information about their parents. High Evolutionary and Lady Bova provided them with some information that led them to discover their father was Magneto. When Magneto was defeated, High Evolutionary and his new men captured all three, including Wolverine, who attacked them, but was eventually captured and further experimented on. High Evolutionary, who had the power of genetic manipulation, turned Wolverine into a wolf-like creature. Charles Xavier and Beast eventually arrived, forcing High Evolutionary and his bestials to run for their lives towards the Void, in search of a place that would shelter them. High Evolutionary and his new men eventually made their way to Counter-Earth, where they seized control of the planet and relegated humans to a secondary status. High Evolutionary then created more bestials and the Knights of Wundagore to enforce his rule. Sir Ram, Lady Ursula, Lady Vermin, and Lord Tiger were his loyal followers and tried to protect his reign with their full might. Somewhere in the middle, he got married and had a child who gave birth to his granddaughter, Karen O'Malley. However, his family was not exempt from his experiments. He experimented on his granddaughter, leading her parents to take her and flee. Later on, John Jameson, Venom and Carnage arrived from Earth, with Jameson joining the Human Resistance, and Venom and Carnage attempted to take over the planet for the Synoptic. Since the High Evolutionary was already the ruler of this planet, the two symbiotes pretended to be his enforcers so that they could fulfill their mission covertly, without being targeted by anyone. Spider-Man also arrived on Counter-Earth, becoming a symbol of hope and rallying the humans to fight against the Bestials. High Evolutionary's granddaughter became a prominent figure in the Resistance, but this fact had no effect on his desire for conquest. Interestingly, as time went on, High Evolutionary's patience for Spider-Man and the Resistance waned, and he eventually made the decision to attempt to exterminate all the humans on the planet. High Evolutionary's journeys and conquests led him to both create and destroy, but his ultimate objective had always been the pursuit of power and control. Hunter. In the Counter-Earth version of Spider-Man Unlimited, Kraven the Hunter was a bald man with a distinctive ponytail who was always barefoot. He was part of a small group of humans who were permitted to live in the upper areas of the city, and he worked as a mercenary for both the Rebels and the High Evolutionary. The one who paid him the most became his employer, and in this case, Kraven was tasked by the High Evolutionary to capture or kill Spider-Man. When Spider-Man broke into Kraven's hideout, he discovered that the Hunter was using a toxic formula that, when combined with particular animal pheromones, 
Jones granted the drinker animal traits, altering his steroidal and hormonal responses to a situation. But at the cost of poisoning the bone marrow, damaging the liver, and reducing one's lifespan by half, Spider-Man seemed concerned about the methods Craven was using to achieve his means. Craven justified the risks of his toxic formula, believing that the power it provided was worth the sacrifice. He jokingly said that instead of living like a slow burn candle, he'd rather live fast and die young like a rocket, shining blindingly bright. Despite Craven's unique approach to fighting Spider-Man and his dangerous methods, Spider-Man triumphed over him by outsmarting him and turning his own security system against him. Spider-Man warned Craven that he now knew his secret and that he would beat him into the ground if he tried to harm him or the rebels again. The episode ended with him walking away, stating that he broke his hand while trying to threaten Craven. The encounter highlighted Hunter's dangerous nature and Spider-Man's resourcefulness and tenacity in overcoming challenging opponents. Dr. Spider-Man's prescription for chronic flaming halitosis. Saram and Fire Drake. In episode 7 in the series, Cry Vulture, we were introduced to one of the evil plans that Saram had come up with to assist the High Evolutionary. Phil, a guy who worked for Naoko, got kidnapped in front of Spider-Man's eyes, and as he was about to tackle the kidnappers, Vulture came along and misunderstood the web-slinger to be a villain who was up to no good. But this confusion cleared up soon enough, and they teamed up to find out where all the humans were vanishing to. They defeated the guard standing near the back entrance of a building, and bickered all along the way. Spider-Man took a peek inside the building and saw a bestial guard pushing Phil around. He understood that this was indeed a lab that used poor humans as live test subjects for something sinister. They broke into the lab hallway and fought with the guards for a while before entering the main complex and encountering a monstrous bestial, which breathed fire on both of them. They got captured by the fire drake and were bound by metal constraints while everyone waited for the boss to come over. The door opened and Sir Ram came in, explaining that he had contributed a lot more than what High Evolutionary could even dream of. He pointed at fire drake and stated that this was just one successful transformation he was behind. There were many more to come in the future. Machines began to activate, and we could see Spider-Man and Vulture struggling against their constraints to get out of the laser beam's way. Looking around for a way out, Spider-Man shot a bullet at a fire extinguisher, and this caused a fire to break out. Fire Drake and Saram ran out of the burning lab, with Vulture and Spider-Man following behind. Spider-Man freed the rest of the prisoners in the meanwhile, and followed Vulture outside, where he encountered Fire Drake. They duped it out briefly, but before Spider-Man procured a fire extinguisher from a moving truck and shoved it in Fire Drake's mouth, stunning him for a while. Vulture caught hold of Sir Ram's vehicle and crashed it into a water tanker, trapping Ram for a moment. The prisoners appeared angry when Vulture presented Ram to them, intent on killing the bestial. But Spider-Man intervened, saying that killing him would only turn them into monsters like Ram was. Fire Drake looked burnt and defeated after the fire extinguisher exploded in his mouth, and Sir Ram limped towards the lab exit, warning Spider-Man that he would return stronger. Oh no you don't, buddy boy. Nothing's getting in my way. Not this time. The Vulture. In the world of Spider-Man Unlimited, the Vulture took on a different role as a hero, a significant departure from his villainous portrayal in the mainstream universe. Similar to the Counter-Earth Green Goblin, the Vulture initially mistook Spider-Man for a villain. However, this backstory revealed a deeper understanding of his character. The Vulture was once a human who had a lot of privilege and behaved like a spoiled brat. He made friends with bestials and began to associate with them, participating in activities that were cruel and shameful like harassing other underprivileged humans. Along Along the way, he mistreated countless human beings. Nonetheless, he played with the son of his servant since they were kids and treated him as a good friend too. But one night, his bestial friends wanted to have some twisted fun with humans, and Vulture tagged along with them. They lit up in an old rundown house on fire, not knowing who the residents were. Out came running all humans along with his childhood friend, who looked at him with tears in his eyes. This changed his social views on his origins, and he swore to protect humans at all costs. The Vulture, despite his past mistakes, decided to rebel against the High Evolutionary, who he believed was responsible for his transformation and subsequent exclusion from human society. This rebellion proved the Vulture's value as a hero and demonstrated his potential for redemption and desire to atone for his past actions. By fighting for the greater good, the Vulture showed himself to be a valuable ally in the fight against oppression and tyranny. He was determined to prove his worth and demonstrate that he could make a positive difference in the world. The Vulture's willingness to challenge the status quo and stand up for what was right made him an inspiration to others and showed that anyone could change and make a positive impact, no matter their past. Overall, the Vulture's Rebellion highlighted the importance of taking a stand and fighting for justice, even in the face of adversity. Your friend looks hungry. Like a barbecue snack. Counter-Earth's version of Electro, an electric eel. 
In the episode Met by Moonlight, John Jameson was missing and Spider-Man was on the lookout, but the Rebels refused to provide any information on his whereabouts. Meanwhile, a werewolf was wreaking havoc at Naoko's medical center, where she struggled to protect herself and her son, Shane. Spider-Man sensed something was amiss and rushed to the scene, only to find Naoko fighting the werewolf. Spider-Man tried to intervene, but Naoko begged him not to hurt the creature. To his surprise, the werewolf reverted to human form when sunlight touched him, revealing him to be Jameson. After undergoing experimental procedures by the High Evolutionary, Jameson was rescued before the transformation could be completed, but part of him remained a mindless animal. Naoko sent tissue samples to a biochemist colleague, who helped her create a bioelectrical implant to prevent transformation. However, something went wrong with the implant, leading to Jameson's transformation. Spider-Man teamed up with Jameson to fight off the Machine Men, who demanded that he surrendered for his crimes against the state. Jameson and Spider-Man eventually joined forces with the Rebels to shut down a power plant that tapped into a natural fusion core, which could potentially destroy half the city's population. Initially hesitant to work with the team, Spider-Man eventually agreed to help after Karen O'Malley accused him of ignoring the millions of lives at stake. When they breached the power plant, they were met by none other than Electro, who was also a monstrous creature now, who had the ability to control electricity. When Spider-Man crossed paths with Electro, the hero was momentarily confused, mistaking him for the Electro he knew from Earth. As the battle ensued, Electro found an unlikely ally with John Jameson, who had once again transformed into the monstrous Man-Wolf, and was seeking to take down Spider-Man. Despite their combined efforts, Spider-Man proved to be too powerful, and he ultimately defeated Electro by sending him hurtling into the main power core. Overloaded and defeated, Electro vanished without a trace. Machine Men of the Evolutionary To maintain a regime as large as a whole planet, a ruler needs more than a few knights to keep order. This was where the Machine Men came into the scene. The Machine Men were a group of advanced robots who had a specific role on the planet to maintain peace and order. They were under the command of a high evolutionary, acting as law enforcement officers. Along with this duty, they supported the Knights of Wondagor in various missions that ranged from espionage to reconnaissance, which was a significant part of their responsibilities. X-51, one of the older models of the Machine Machine Men made a groundbreaking decision to join the Human Resistance, a group that aimed to overthrow the oppressive regime of the Machine Men and their masters. This decision was unexpected because X-51 was programmed to follow orders and obey commands without question. However, his decision to align himself with humanity and fight for freedom and equality was a display of advanced artificial intelligence, demonstrating qualities such as empathy and free will, which were typically seen as human traits. X-51's decision to join the Human Resistance raised questions about the limitations of artificial intelligence intelligence and the possibility of robots having their unique opinions and values. X-51's origins remain a mystery, but his discovery at a junkyard by Peter Parker and Shane Yamada Jones marked the beginning of his journey. When he was on the brink of being scrapped, X-51 powered up and insisted that he was still functional. Later, when Shane was in danger, X-51 acted on his own accord and saved him from harm. However, the Knights of Wondagore who created X-51 were not pleased that he had been activated without their consent and ordered him to be brought back to them for study. Despite the Knight's orders, Spider-Man helped X-51 escape and allowed him to rest and recover at Naoko Yamada Jones' clinic. Eventually, a homing device in X-51 was activated, prompting him to return to the Knights. Spider-Man followed X-51 and after a battle and a few debates, X-51 was allowed to join the Human Resistance, a group committed to overthrowing the tyrannical rule of the Machine Men. As the rebellion continued, X-51 was given a makeover to look like the current version of the Machine Men. He became a valuable member of the Resistance and played a crucial role in their efforts to achieve freedom and equality. Despite the enigmatic nature of his past, X-51's decision to join the human resistance demonstrated advanced artificial intelligence, and his ability to defy his programming made him an extraordinary addition to the group. Synoptic Venom and Carnage seem to be talking about something called the Synoptic in the beginning of the series. So what was a Synoptic, and why is it included in this list? Millions of years ago, symbiote spores arrived on Counter-Earth and took control of the planet's dinosaurs for several million years, creating the Synoptic. However, a meteor struck, causing a food shortage for the symbiotes' organic hosts. The symbiotes detached from the dinosaurs and evolved into their current liquid form. Venom and Carnage learned body manipulation abilities from the symbiotes of Counter-Earth and aimed to reach there with the NASA expedition team. They hijacked the shuttle and landed on Counter-Earth, where they offered to help the High Evolutionary and his Knights of Wondagore after being advised not to raise suspicion. Unknown to the High Evolutionary,
Revolutionary. The symbiotes were secretly gathering new volunteers as hosts for their growing faction. Spider-Man attempted to stop them, and the High Evolutionary sent Venom and Carnage to deal with the new Spider-Man threat. For six months, Venom and Carnage pretended to serve the High Evolutionary and the Bestial Army, gathering information and resources. However, their plan was eventually exposed, and they decided to fight for global dominance through new methods. Despite Spider-Man and the Green Goblin's efforts to destroy their synoptic hive, they managed to move to an abandoned building on the outskirts of New York City. Their plan to take over the world involved stealing technology that could help them in spreading the symbiote spores all over the world, starting from Sir Ram's lab. Conclusion. This was a list of every villain in Spider-Man Unlimited who ever appeared on the show. While most of them were villains we have seen Spider-Man encounter on Earth, their origin stories and different motivations for their actions on Counter-Earth made all the difference. Spider-Man Unlimited had a lot of potential going forward, with Spidey's quirky nature and quips and the new anti-symbiote suit, which was exciting in action, but poor sales could not let it move forward more than a few episodes. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.